pushing two boxes. Two boxes on a table are pushed horizontally on a frictionless surface by an applied force of 30 newtons. Box A has a mass of 5 kilograms, box B has a mass of 8 kilograms. Draw our free body diagrams for both A and B, find the acceleration of the two boxes, and find the force of box A on B. So the notation here is the first letter tells you which object is feeling the force, and the second letter tells you who's doing it. Let's work with box A first. We have the applied force pushing it to the right. So we don't draw the arrowhead pointing into box A, right? Free body diagram, all the forces start on the dot and move outwards. So here's the applied force to the right, and it's being pushed back. Box B is going to push back on it. So it'll be the force on A due to block B. We have the normal force in the upward direction and gravity pushing down. Now F app does not push on box B at all. Contact forces only act on the object that they actually touch. So it will act on A because it's touching it, but it won't do anything to box B. This problem will be very similar to the pulling two boxes problem. So kind of jumped the gun a little bit. I explained this force on a previous slide, but that's okay. We'll say it again. We've got the applied force pushing block A to the right. Now, box A is pushing B with the force F of B A. Okay, so box A is pushing box B, and that force will be the force on B due to A. So what is box B going to do? As explained by Newton's third law, that will push back on box A with an equal magnitude force, and that will be F A B right here. And we're going to draw that a little smaller than the applied force. Why? Because we know box A is going to move in that direction. So this force here has to be greater than this force. Now let's draw a free body diagram for box B. The only force acting on box B in the horizontal direction is the force that box A exerts on box B. So this is the force on B due to A. The magnitude of that force, F of BA, is equal to the magnitude of F sub AB. So the force that A exerts on B, the magnitude, is equal to the force that B exerts on A. That's Newton's third law. And I'm going to repeat this again because this is critical. The applied force does not act on box B at all. Contact forces only act on the object that they actually touch. So you can see here, there's only one force. There's no applied force there. Part C, find the acceleration of the two boxes. The applied force will move both boxes together, so they will each have the same acceleration. We need to write Newton's second law for box A. So first we'll do the x direction or horizontal. And what do we have? We have F applied to the right. We have the force that B exerts on A to the left. So F applied will get a positive value. F sub AB is negative. It's to the left. And that equals the mass of A, make sure you put the subscript so we know which box we're talking about, times the acceleration. We have the acceleration here to the right, so that's a positive quantity. Let's do the y direction forces and acceleration, but that won't be needed for this problem. We only need that if we have to find friction, but this is a frictionless problem. So we have the normal force pointing up, that's positive, gravitational down. Now in this case, there is zero acceleration. The box is not going up and down at all. So we just have normal minus ma sub g, m sub a times g is equal to zero. And this one is not terribly interesting. We don't need it for the problem. We'll put all those forces on one slide now for box A. We have the x direction force, right? We started there and we wound up with this equation and y direction like this. The y equation is only used to find the normal force, which could be used to calculate the friction force. But as we've said, there is no friction, so we're only going to work with the x equation here. We have another box, don't we? Box B. So here's our Newton's second law for box B in the x direction. Here it is for the y direction. We're only interested in the x direction. Once again, y, no friction. 
So each free body diagram gave us two equations, one in each direction, right? We had the x direction and the y. The only direction we're interested in is the x direction when we want to try and find f sub b a. And these are the two equations we're going to use. Now, we want to find f sub b a, but guess what? f sub a b and f sub b a are exactly the same magnitude. So we find one, we find the other. We now have two simultaneous equations with two unknown variables. So here's an unknown variable, a, and here's an unknown variable. Now, please don't get confused here. Uh, it looks like they're different, right? f sub a, b, f sub b, a, but these are the magnitudes of these two vectors, f sub a, b, f sub b, a, and the different signs just tell us a different direction. So we can actually replace f sub b a with f sub a b, except we're probably going to want to do the other way because this is the guy we're finding. So let's see what we're going to do. And this time, we're not going to go through all three methods of solving simultaneous equations. Please refer back, or if you haven't looked at this one yet, look at the pushing two boxes problem, and that will show you the three methods of simultaneous equation solving. This time, we're going to use the substitution method. We need to reduce our two equations, this one and this one, which have two unknowns, to one equation and one unknown. Since f sub b a equals f sub a b, we're going to replace this f sub b a with f sub a b. So we have this equation here. f sub a b is equal to m b m sub b times acceleration. So here's our two equations now. So here are our two equations from the previous slide. We're going to take this value for f sub a b and substitute in m sub b times a, which gives us this equation right here. f app minus m sub b times a equals m sub a times a. First thing, we add m sub b a to both sides, so it'll cancel out on the left-hand side and it'll show up on the right. Then we switch both sides so we have this equation, the mass is an acceleration on the left side, the applied force on the right. We factor out an a, and then we divide both sides by m sub a plus m sub b, and we get this value for our acceleration. You can try the other two methods for solving simultaneous equations if you'd like. Frankly, it'd be good practice. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and put in our numbers. Remember them? Way start of the problem. And we find that our acceleration is 2.31 meters per second squared. This, frankly, is the most or the least interesting part of the whole problem. Getting here was all the fun. And finally, find the force of box A on B, which is F sub B A. And we have two equations, this one and this one. Let's use the second equation. It has less math. Either one will work because the magnitude of f sub b a is equal to the magnitude of f sub a b. The directions were taken care of by putting a negative there and a positive here. So if we solve either equation, we'll get the same answer. So f sub b a is 8 kilograms times the acceleration we found, and we get the force that block a exerts on block b is 18.5 newtons. That is less than the applied force on box A, which is good, right? Because here's, let's draw it, here's box A, here's box B. We've got the applied force pushing that way, and it's a good thing that the force that B exerts on A is less than the applied force because we see in real life that the box will accelerate in that direction, which means this force has to be greater than this force, or else we're in a lot of trouble.